A major operation order came from Kiev. Ukrainian defense forces began to conduct a major operation against Russian artillery units. Explosions sounded from Luhansk throughout the day. Moscow lost a great deal of power in the east. British intelligence reports announced that Russia continued the shipments with major shortcomings. Giant aid package from United States to Ukraine was announced. In the process, NATO said that Russia would never win the war. Russia is trying to deal with major problems in this process. Moscow has great problems in ground operations. Russian army does not even have access to old Soviet-made armored vehicles. Detailed losses of Russian forces were announced. As a result of operations on the Eastern Front, Russian troops lost a large number of warplanes, armored vehicles, and a record number of personnel. The fate of the Eastern Front will soon be determined. Intense clashes continue in three critical regions. In this process, Moscow began to respond with artillery fire. The losses suffered by Russian army caused Moscow's long-term plans to fail. Putin's power in Syria and Ukraine has fallen to the lowest levels in the last 10 years. Putin is very worried about possible uprisings in Russia and Belarus. Protests in China are expected to begin soon in Russia. The losses inflicted completely changed the advantage status. If Russia does not respond to Kiev's operation order, Putin will be dealt a big blow. The tension is higher than ever. Early in the morning, Kiev began talks with Ukrainian Eastern Operational Command for a critical operation. With the first light of the morning, Ukrainian army began to carry out very violent attacks on Russian headquarters and Russian defense lines in the region. The broad Russian defense line in the region was attacked continuously for four hours by Ukrainian artillery units. Luhansk Governor Siri Hayde continues to inflict heavy losses on the enemy troops. In Svatovo, the headquarters and defense lines of the Russian troops were destroyed. According to the statements of the Ukrainian general staff, more than 20 Russian soldiers were neutralized and more than 30 Russian soldiers were injured. Due to the destruction of the headquarters, Russian army lost a large number of experienced soldiers. With the attack of the Ukrainian army on the positions, Russian soldiers on the defensive line hid in the bunkers. However, attacks on the headquarters neutralized all targets. For this reason, all of the high-ranking Russian soldiers serving in the Russian headquarters were neutralized. Russian army made statements that it would start to have bigger problems with experienced soldiers. In addition, as a result of the attacks, Russian armored vehicles, air defense systems, numerous rocket launcher systems and artillery units in the region were destroyed. As a result of the operations carried out, many Russian armored vehicles were destroyed. We believe that as a result of artillery fire, four heavy battle tanks, 11 armored vehicles and six artillery units were destroyed. Russian army is trying to deploy in the region with Soviet-made vintage armored vehicles. Russia continues to make shipments to protect the region, but British intelligence reports revealed that Russian army had major shortcomings. As a result of attacks by Ukrainian army, many Russian armored vehicles were destroyed. It is known that Russian armed forces has a large number of armored vehicles. However, hundreds of Russian armored vehicles are being destroyed on the eastern and southern fronts. As a result of the losses for nine months, Russian army started to use Soviet-made old armored vehicles. In this case, the advance of Russian army stopped and its defense capability decreased. British intelligence announced that in the last three months, Russian forces began to experience major shortcomings on the front line. British Ministry of Defense has observed a large decrease in the number of armored personnel carriers belonging to Russian army. This greatly reduced the number of shipments sent to Russian soldiers. In addition, the decrease in the contribution of Russian troops to reconnaissance and support began to cause inexperienced Russian soldiers to have great problems at the front. The increase in the intensity of the war at the front showed that the combat power of Russian army was clearly decreasing. He stated that it was determined that the Russian infantry at the front could not be supported most of the time. British Ministry of Defense said that Russia's advantage in military equipment has completely come to an end. Ukrainian artillery units continue their successful operations against Russian military equipment located behind the line of defense. For this reason, Russian armored vehicles and military equipment, which are behind the defense line, continue to suffer great losses. 
The delivery of a new generation of military equipment to Ukrainian army completely changed the advantage in the number of military equipment. Since the first day of the war, Russian army has lost 88,450 soldiers. In addition, within one day, Russian army lost two warplanes, four tanks, at least 10 armored vehicles, seven personnel carriers, four fuel oil tankers, and six artillery units. In this process, according to the statements of British Ministry of Defense, it is obvious that Russian army suffered great losses. However, instead of attacking Ukrainian defense lines, Russian army is attacking infrastructure facilities on Ukrainian soil. Russian army can launch attacks on Ukrainian forces with artillery and multiple rocket launcher systems to protect armored vehicles and military equipment. But Moscow used its arsenal to attack infrastructure facilities. The aim of Russian army is not to achieve victory over Ukrainian army. The main aim of Moscow is to cause the surrender of Kiev by damaging the territory of Ukraine. However, more and more support continues to come to the territory of Ukraine with each passing day. For this reason, we can say that all of Putin's unlawful plans fell through. In this process, Moscow is experiencing a great shortage of ammunition and its losses are increasing day by day. In this process, many infrastructure facilities on the territory of Ukraine were damaged. However, work has begun on the repair of these infrastructure facilities and Kiev has announced that more air defense systems from Western countries will be deployed to Ukraine. Following the statements, it was announced that the giant aid package would be sent to Ukraine by the United States. As Russia's attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure continue as winter approach us, the United States has announced that it will provide Ukraine with a $53 million aid package to support its energy infrastructure. Amid Russia's ongoing attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure, Secretary of State Blinken announced that more than $53 million in aid from the United States government to support electricity supply will soon reach Ukraine, the U.S. State Department said in a written statement. On the other hand, NATO made statements supporting Ukraine. NATO declared that if Russia wins the war, the peace situation in the region will come to an end. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg stated that NATO will continue to support Ukraine in its war with Russia and said, there will be no lasting peace if Russia wins. Jens Stoltenberg announced that they have increased their preparations in the eastern flank of NATO against Russia's attacks and that the number of troops in the region has doubled. Stoltenberg stated that Russian President Vladimir Putin lost the war, so he responded with more illegal attacks and attack cities and infrastructure facilities in Ukraine. Stoltenberg said that authoritarian leaders around the world should not see Putin win and that his long-term security interests are to support Ukraine, emphasizing that Ukraine and NATO have a very close partnership relationship. Stoltenberg said that this did not begin with a Russian attack on February 24 and that NATO countries had trained Ukrainian soldiers long ago, stating that they are behind the decision taken in this direction at NATO's Bucharest summit. Stoltenberg said NATO's doors are open to Ukraine, stating that Finland and Sweden are on the way to membership. Stoltenberg said that Russia and Putin could never interfere with which country will become a NATO member. After the statements made, the tension between the East and the West increased. We'll see what happens in the coming days. We have come to the end of another video. You can like the video to support us. By subscribing, you can easily follow new videos. I wish you all happy days. See you.